Winnie the Pooh is now part of the public domain in the United States. Copyright for the character and most of his pals expired at the start of the year. It could be a blockbuster opportunity for authors, filmmakers and other creators who grew up with the franchise and have waited decades to enter the 100 Acre Wood. For more on this, let's go to Jennifer Jenkins in Durham, North Carolina. She's the Director of the Centre for the Study of the Public Domain at Duke University. Welcome to the program, Jennifer. Thanks so much for joining us. Firstly, explain to us how this has come about. Why, after almost a century after he was created, has Winnie the Pooh now entered the public domain? And explain to us what the public domain is exactly. Thanks so much for having me. Yes, so the public domain is the realm of material over which the copyright has expired, meaning that those creative works become free for anyone to use, anyone to build upon, just as you showed in your segment to make prequels and sequels, for example, of the 1926 book, Winnie the Pooh. How did this come about? Well, these works were set, including Winnie the Pooh, works from 1926 were set to go into the public domain in the United States 20 years ago in 2002, but Congress hit a giant pause button and added 20 years to the copyright term. So that's why these works are only entering the public domain after the expiration of a 95 year term, as you said, almost a century of copyright protection. The Winnie the Pooh that many of us are familiar with is actually owned by Disney, isn't it? So what does this mean for the entertainment giant, the fact that uh, the original version of Winnie the Pooh is now in the public domain? You know, I mean, time will tell, but I think Disney is going to be fine. Uh, I was astounded at the statistics that I found that you showed, $80.3 billion since inception. But that's the, the lucrative entire franchise. And so, as you said, Winnie the Pooh still owns copyrights in later works from after 1926, the TV shows, the movies, the later books. They still own the trademark merchandising rights, for example, uh, on using the words Winnie the Pooh for all of the merchandise that Disney sells. And so the what's gone into the public domain is that gentle, sweet, innocent story from 1926. And if people in the United States are free to write prequels, to write sequels, to reimagine the book, to share it, that could actually increase the value of the franchise because there can be renewed even greater interest in the Winnie the Pooh story and the Winnie the Pooh characters. And people may very well want to go out and buy their new Eeyore plush doll or Piglet plush doll. And so when it, Disney still does retain important rights. And often when works enter the public domain, it generates even greater interest on the part of the public in that creative material. Explain to us what this means on an international level, because you, you mentioned earlier that this mm -hmm. law surrounding the public domain is specific to the United States. So can people outside of the US also use Winnie the Pooh? You'll have to wait a bit. So for works, older works, works from before 1978, the term in the US and the rest of the world is different. We have the 95 year term. The term in the rest of the world is either the life of the author plus 50 years or the life of the author plus 70 years. That's the term in the EU. 
For works after 1978, we have the same term, life of the author plus 70 years. So you'll have to wait a bit because A.A. A. Milne died in 1956. And so his works will be going into the public domain in the EU, for example, five years from now. So you have to wait a bit, sorry. <laughs> and why is uh, the public domain so important? Why do we have an expiration date on copyright for the creation of things like Winnie the Pooh, uh, books, music, films? It's the second part of the life cycle for your creative works when the rights expire and those works become free to inspire future creators. And so it's about creativity. If you think about it, none of us create in a vacuum. The ability to be inspired by, have access to, and freely build upon your predecessors, your inspirations, is part of how creativity happens. But it also matters for another reason. It matters for access. 95 years is a long time. And by the end of the copyright term, very few works are still in print, are still in circulation, are still commercially viable. So when they go into the public domain, they tend to be reprinted, they tend to be rediscovered, they tend to be found again. People can actually rescue those works from obscurity and put them online or print new editions. And so it allows us to rediscover our history, our, our cultural heritage, and to breathe life into older works that were in danger of being forgotten and lost in history. Yes. It also matters for education, everything. So it's a, it's a very important part of our cultural ecosystem. It'll be interesting to see exactly what people do with Winnie the Pooh now that it is in the public domain. Jennifer Jenkins, thank you again for joining us on Money Talk.